So I've recently tried diving into Unreal Engine. Um, the reason why was because I wanted to turn uh, Jewel Defender um, into what I would consider a high quality 3D explosion fest co-op game on Steam. Um, I want to get fireballs, particles, and all that. And also with a high frame rate and snappy arcade controls. Um, so I need performance. Uh, I was looking at Godot or Godot. Um, wasn't quite there. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, yes, it can be good for, you know, basic uh, performance, but uh, for 3D games with lots of effects and all that, it doesn't seem to cut it. Um, Unity uh, has left a bad taste in my mouth uh, based on their decisions as far as like um, how they're going to charge for apps and they've basically gone back and forth on that. But beyond that, I also really, when I've used Unity in the past, um, I was making a VR uh, sword fighting game. Um, it really, uh, it really, I didn't enjoy the UI. It didn't seem like anything ever made any sense. Uh, so I've been plotting through a Udemy guide on um, how to use Unreal Engine um, and using it with C++. Um, and also I've been watching, uh, I also just watched a video on how to basically just build a Flappy Bird game using Unreal and, and Blueprints. Um, and what I've come to the conclusion of is that I hate learning these UIs. Uh, when I watch people make things uh, in game engines, it seems uh, like they know how to navigate the infinite maze of menus and just select uh the right pieces to use and uh like uh and they just already knew how to configure them um, but what i witness uh, is something that takes a few seconds to achieve in video but i know that it takes orders of magnitude more time reading the documentation watching videos and trying to figure out where everything is and what are the right components to use in every single kind of situation and, and that's kind of i think one of the problems with um these game engines is that uh you really need a real depth of knowledge of what all these pieces are that you're putting together um because each of those pieces do a huge amount of things um so anyway ugh. uh so reflecting back I, i've made some games with uh javascript and lua uh one of my first games that i did was uh for early iphone i actually made a clone of asteroids and i also made a clone of um uh, atari tank uh which actually both of those wound up getting me contacted by atari's lawyers who basically made me take those down but um i also did some stuff in lua using uh the play date uh, made two games through them. Um, one was Jewel Defender and one was um, uh, Elf Factory. And and they did pretty well. And, uh, you know, for the very small player base that is Playdate. Um, I also made a MMO pirate game in JavaScript with networking and all that uh, using WebSockets um, and named Constant Sale. And, and that was also pretty successful. So... Um, not using any game engines and just writing code uh, in whatever language it happened to be seems to be uh, the best thing for me. Uh, and what I've have achieved with game engines has been a bunch of false starts, lots of watching YouTube videos, and generally just not actually getting it up off the ground. Um, and maybe this is just clearly why I'm a programmer and not a you know, uh, a designer working in uh, Photoshop or uh, doing much with Blender or anything like that. So I just really hate working with UIs. Um, but now I need to figure out how to put on my big boy pants and make a Steam game uh, worth uh, worthy of people actually dropping money on it um, and doing, you know, real basic stuff on Playdate. It's not going to do it. And uh, failing with uh, these game engines is also not going to do it. So now prior to uh, working with uh, in Unreal, um, I also tried experimenting with something called Lover, L-O-V-R, which is um, Lua, but uh, it's uh, unlike, uh, it's sort of similar to Love 2D, but it basically targets VR and also just 3D game development. Um, I figured it would make 
uh, it would be great because it was Lua, and which comes real easy to me. And then porting it over Jewel Defender to it would be just a matter of updating API calls and making 2D models into 3D. Uh, and I was experiencing build issues on my Intel-based Mac at the time. I've moved past Intel Macs at this point, but uh, and I came to the conclusion that the also the project just didn't have enough contributors to really, um, if I get stuck, be able to get sufficient support. Uh, I also considered SDL. Uh, this is used in many, many uh, big name AAA games. Um, but it seemed kind of scary at first, uh, needing C++, and which I'm not very familiar with. And the framework also seemed pretty dense and hard to dive into. So in either case, I, I, after messing with Unreal Engine, um, I was looking to circle back and uh, decided to move away from it. Um, but in the process, I stumbled upon something called Raylib, uh, R-A-Y-L-I-B, which uh, achieves a lot of what SDL does, but uh, is, it has a simpler API and bindings for a bunch of different languages. Um, so you can basically, if you wanted to, you can use the, so it's written in C, so you can actually use C as uh, the main interface for it, but you can also use Lua or many other different languages like C, C Sharp or whatever. Um, it seems to be pretty lightning fast, um, and browsing through the examples, uh, it covers all of my use cases from 3D stuff to 2D stuff, um, and even has some uh, some uh, Git repos that people are doing with uh, VR, VR. So if I ever want to get back into VR, I could know I could use that. Um, I was also looking through some of their showcases, and it hit me as to another one of the reasons why I wanted to code things uh, rather than just using a game engine. Uh, game engines provide you a very straight path towards developing a game. And it really makes sense to not veer too far out of that path because it takes a little bit of effort. Basically, it gives you very good guidelines and how to get things to happen. Um, but when you're coding free form, you decide how everything looks and how everything is rendered. Uh, there's really basically no straight, easy pass because you start out with a blank sheet, um, a, ba a blank uh, document, and basically have to start from there. Um, where, you know, when you start up a game engine, you start up in a scene and you can start dropping things in. You can start giving those instructions, but that's going to be very much dictating how the game actually runs. But uh, when you're doing freeform, you know, you can really be making it look however you want. And uh, and watching the showcase, which I'll, I'll include a link to uh, in the notes, um, I started seeing something that was pretty impressive. Uh, everything became less cookie cutter, it seemed, uh, using this framework. Um, and so basically, people were coming up with ideas that would be... Uh, difficult to do if you're using a game engine yeah they're achievable maybe uh but they wouldn't come out that way on the other side most likely and that is what i think is the beauty part is um it leads itself to more experimentation um anyway as a language um i think i'm going to try and hit c first using it uh instead of lua uh because i've taken a look at some uh performance stats and um, it it does very well performance with Lua, but it does significantly faster with C. And heck, I should probably learn something new once in a while. So I'm going to try C with it, and uh, and then uh, maybe I might flip back to Lua when it, when I decide if it's you know takes too much trouble dealing with pointers and stuff like that in C. Um, but yeah, so kind of exploring a new thing and uh, and Raylib, uh, yeah. It's got some great games on it, uh, great games that people have made, and you should check it out.